19 countries request to join BRICS with the goal to challenge the U.S. dollar. So um, these, these are countries. What is BRICS? It's uh, Britain, uh, excuse me, not Britain, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and now South Africa, BRICS. So uh, when, when we're looking at what BRICS um, has in store, let's take a look at what BRICS uh, um, had, had mentioned um, and what this means also, Elon Musk has said a, a couple things here. Eponized, Elon Musk warns weaponizing currencies that the de-dollarization movement takes hold. De-dollarization. So if you're weaponizing currency through tough times, other countries will stop using it. A growing number of countries are partaking in efforts to undermine the dollar supreme supremacy of global trade and investment flows. So here's, 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 fi- here's five ways that de-dollarization can affect the common Joe, like people, me, and you. Number one, income and savings. So people in the middle income demographic who earn and save money in U.S. dollars um, may see their income and savings impacted by de-dollarization because your money is just worth less. Yeah. Because if they're using other currencies, you know, uh, 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 for example, uh, uh, you, you've been to a different country, you've traveled. How, uh, what's, uh, what's a country that you traveled to that you said, well, I can get that for a dollar? Wow. Cool. Egypt. Wow. Okay. So tell me about Egypt. I had a tour guide from the five days I was there, full five days. And he drove me around for all five days, took me to multiple spots every day, picked me up at 7 a.m., dropped me off at 9 p.m. And by the end of the five days, I gave him 40 bucks. And this man was extremely happy. happy. $40. Exactly. $40. Okay. American dollars. Imagine that happening to America. Yeah. Sure. That's what the dollarization is going to do. Yeah. Sure. So imagine the Uber driver is going to be happy that, oh, my God, thank you for your $40, you know, XYZ dollar. Not yeah. American dollar, but XYZ, you know, brick dollar. Yeah. That's the potential of what happened if BRICS continues to evolve and this movement of de-dollarization continues, which leads me to number two, purchasing power. You know, in the Philippines, guess how much they sell the cell phone for? Uh, it's a thousand, uh, it's a thousand dollars for a cell phone, right? Right. Guess how much they sell it for in the, in the Philippines? How much? A thousand dollars. That's the same shit. Yeah. Right? And I'm thinking in my head, the average income in the Philippines, where my family's from, is 250 bucks a month. How the heck are you buying, how, how are you guys buying a, a cell phone? These guys would save for months. To get a, to get a cell phone. phone. And then they protect it like this, right? By the way, the only, only country where you can buy a cell phone with financing interest free is yeah. America. Everybody else, you got to buy, buy it cash. Philippines, you got to buy it cash. So your purchase of power is, is, is not going to be as much because you're, you're making less. So in other words, imagine us being in America. We're making $100,000 a year, but the cell phone now costs $5,000. That's it yeah. because it's being manufactured elsewhere. That's the potential. Uh, third one, investments. Uh, de-dollarization can also impact the value of your savings and investment. If you have your money invested in assets dominated in, in the nomination of U.S. dollars, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, the value of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds are worth less because the American currency is no longer the standard for the world, which leads me to number four. So if you want to make more money, it's going to also affect your, glo- your employment opportunities. So middle-income workers may also see changes in employment opportunities. So why? Because foreign companies that employ, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, for foreign companies employ them, uh, that, that employs us, they decide to pull out of our country due to, uh, uh, to, due to the economy, the job market will become more competitive because let's say it's more expensive to have workers in Mexico, but it's cheaper to have it in the United States. You see what I mean? So, that would, so in a way, you would say that if that ends up occurring, our country could potentially become a second-tier country. Of course. Why do you think we're? Why do you think a, a lot of the workers are, or a lot of manufacture done in China, because it's inexpensive, cheap labor. Yeah. Guess what's gonna happen in America? That. Yeah. <laughs> we become we become the future sweatshops of the world, because it's more expensive to employ people in Canada, yeah. more expensive to employ people in Brazil, more expensive to employ people in China, Russia. It's less expensive to employ them in. In America. In America, damn right. That's the effect of sure. de-dollarization. Uh, business opportunities, okay? Uh, if businesses rely on imports or exports, in other words, the people that benefit the most are the ones that export their goods and services because now it's worth more and bought more overseas. De-dollarization, be tougher to sell it locally. So your gross revenue, uh, and that's where tariffs and uh, uh, taxes come into place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in other words, tariffs means that I can, I can sell my products in China but they charge us, they charge, uh, they, uh, um, we, we can sell products. For example, if we bring products and services inside China, there's no tariff. Yeah. As an example, that's why Trump was saying, hey, you know, if you want to sell your stuff in China, 
pay us a tariff, right. a fee for coming to the show to sell your products. It's like a flea market. Yeah. Is it free to have, you have to pay for your booth? 1,000%. Right? You got to, yeah. Yeah, as a vendor, but imagine America being a flea market for China. They're saying there's, there's no cost to be at the flea market. Yeah. Right? Versus over there, we sell in China. Guess what we got to do? We got to pay, you got to pay a tariff. Hey, you said Mexico's involved in this, right? Sure. So I just want to know if I should just call it quits in the next 10 years, buy a nice home in Mexico, and just move south of the border, man, and just live. Bro, that's a real life. conversation. Yeah. That is a real conversation. You know, my wife and I were just talking about yesterday. If America doesn't go where we wanted to go, and we have all this money saved up, and we're still making all this cash, where does our dollar go further? Right? Yeah. Or where, where do we really want to live? And again, I can't believe this is a conversation we have about the country that we love, what we call home. Yeah. Not good. Just from what I've been looking into it, for a, for a lot of these uh, for the, these young cats watching us, you know, I guess these are I guess a couple steps that you can do to prepare for the potential impact um, for our for our future. And if it'd be cool for me to re read these out, I type these in. Yeah. And if you agree or disagree, okay, one thousand percent, feel free. Fire away. Uh, number one is being able to stay informed about the news and trends related to the specific topic. Number two, di diversifying your investments to reduce exposure to potential risk. Right. Uh, number three, consider investing in alternative currencies such as cryptocurrencies or other uh, other like gold and silver. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, those are other things you can do. Invest in tangible assets that can hold their value even in time of economic uncertainty. Prepare for potential inflation by investing in assets that, that typically perform well in, in um, inflationary environments. And the last one is be prepared for potential changes in interest rates by reducing debt or considering alternative sources sources of fin financing. I love it. The only one I would caution there would be cryptocurrency. Okay. Okay, the only one I could, could like put whatever you got in cryptocurrency of money that you continue will willing to lose. Mm. But it does have a potential. It does have it does have a future just not in the current non-regulatory environment that exists in today. It's still too much of the wild wild west, but I do believe that down the road there's going to be some form of cryptocurrency and what whatever whichever takes off. I don't know the I'm not behind a lot of people aren't privy to the conversation behind closed doors of which cryptocurrency is it going to be bitcoin is it going to be ethereum is it going to be you know whatever and so we don't know that yet because there's not a lack of regulation but the reason why by the way the reason why cryptocurrency was to begin with is because they don't want regulation mm. they don't want government involvement they don't want centralization of, of cryptocurrency but what we're realizing too is when you allow too many people in a in a, in a playground to play have fun eventually a bully shows up yeah and takes away the fun from everybody and so Bullies have showed up to the cryptocurrency world. Now people say, we're getting beat up. We're getting robbed. Somebody's stealing our lunch. Somebody's stealing our life savings. Who's going to help us? And the governments are saying, well, you didn't want to help to begin with. <laughs> yeah. there, there it is. Oh, now you want us. That's the same reason why the defund the police doesn't work, because the same politicians, they're talking about defund the police. When they get carjacked, when they get robbed, they're pissed off that 911 ain't showing up. That a man with a gun, a woman with a gun, enforcing the laws and show, showing up. But why? Because they decided to fund the police. And when a bully shows up, that's when you want authority to show, authority to show up. Yeah. So, so if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.